Hi, and welcome back. We're going to talk about SASE today. I just came across a presentation from Gartner where they re reflected on the development of SASE over the last two years in terms of where we are right now. So we're going to put some of that in context, at least from my perspective, and talk about how you can initiate your own SASE journey. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy. I'm a vice president at ARG, and while I work for ARG, this video is my own and not necessarily a reflection of the views and opinions of my employer. This channel is all about providing IT leaders with great tools and information on how to make impactful business decisions to drive their organizations forward. So let's take a look at SASE and how that might be a component of that objective. So we always start with an outline so you know what's coming in these videos. We're going to define SASE. We've done a couple videos on SASE, but for those who are new to the concept, we're going to do a quick definition and a quick benefits overview. And then we're going to talk about where Gartner sees SASE today and also where Gartner sees SASE going in the future. And then lastly, we're going to talk about how you can initiate the SASE journey within your organization. This is a conceptual definition of SASE. We have a more complete definition and overview of SASE. I'll link to here in the video. SASE, S-A-S-E, stands for Secure Access Service Edge. Today, it's a framework, meaning it's a, it's a conglomeration of various solutions that deliver security and network performance to users wherever and however they choose to work. And this is the key defining important element of SASE. It's not really about security. It's not really about performance. It is about user experience and getting users comfortable working in the environments in which they choose. We're talking about improving productivity of the entire workforce, not just enhancing the security posture of the organization. I think that's one of the main selling points of SASE as you begin to socialize the concept of SASE to your non-technical peers within the organization. So the key concept of SASE is that it delivers security and performance via distributed cloud architecture. It allows users to access security services close to their access point. So if I have workers in a, uh, in a region, let's say in the United States, I have workers in Austin, Texas, my main security stack might be in Minneapolis. Do I want to send my Austin workers to Minneapolis to get a security treatment? and then send them back out to the cloud services that they're trying to access, maybe in Palo Alto, California? Probably not. That's a really in inefficient network route. I want those users to access the security platform as close to where they are so they can make a direct link to the workflow or work, uh, work product that they're trying to access somewhere else in the cloud. So here's my bold prediction, and I say that somewhat sarcastically because it's an easy prediction to make. SASE is going to dominate the security industry going forward. Every organization, every security uh, participant in the marketplace is moving towards a SASE type of construct. I just described why SASE might benefit the end user experience, but let's talk a little bit more specifically about some of the SASE benefits. First of all, more and more applications are moving to the cloud. Today, as much as 80% of a typical employee's work is done through a cloud type of service architecture. Virtually all new applications that are deployed going forward will have a cloud component. They'll either be in public or private clouds or hybrid cloud environments, and edge computing is beginning to take hold. You have organizations like Microsoft Azure launching an edge computing initiative in 2020. That will become more and more important, and that will drive more and more value to a SASE type of security posture than a traditional centralized security stack. End users, if they're not getting a good experience, will find ways around whatever is blocking them from that good experience. So you want to remove the friction of your employees accessing those cloud-based environments. And SASE is a way of removing those, those friction points. So very quickly, SASE promises the following benefits. Improved end user experience and performance. We've just talked about that. Greater security. We, I've got, again, in, in our SASE overview, and a very complete explanation as to how greater security uh, will be delivered by SASE. Improved security compliance. If your users are, are not avoiding or finding ways around your current security components because their experience isn't good, you're going to get greater compliance. You'll also get greater visibility, which will allow you to enforce policy more effectively. You'll have simplified security tools and integration. Within a single vendor environment, you're gonna get one dashboard to manage your entire security stack. And that integration will allow you much more seamless architecture within your security posture, rather than cobbling together different solutions from different vendors. 
Uh, that's going to drive ease of management and ultimately lower costs. Now, I've had uh, some customers or some, some contacts from these videos ask, how will lower costs be derived? From what I'm seeing, you know, SASE is, is an expense that I don't have today. Well, SASE typically replaces different point solutions that you have today. Some people are implementing SASE for the roadmap security in initiatives, so SASE is increasing spend. But longer term, SASE will reduce spend because it reduces the overlap that you have in security capabilities. Take, for example, deep packet inspection. Well, how many different platforms do you have uh, invested in today that can do deep packet inspection? Probably your secure web gateway, probably your firewall, probably your EDR platform. They all have the ability to uh, decrypt the packet, inspect it, and re-encrypt it, and, and, and deliver it to the end user. Do you need three levels of deep packet inspection? Are you using all three of those? You're paying for them, probably, uh, but you're not using them. You're, only, you're probably using one deep packet inspection tool out of all, all those three capabilities. So that's how lower costs will come in. We're going to reduce the, the amount of duplication of services within each of our uh, point solutions. I mentioned earlier that SASE right now is a framework. It's the assembly of different point solutions into a SASE strategy. And those solutions include the following, network as a service, which is uh, a carrier strategy. It's an SD-WAN strategy. It's a content distribution service. It's bandwidth aggregation. So the concept of primary backup for bandwidth goes away. Now it's about using all the bandwidth that you have all the time and it's an edge equipment strategy. It's a consolidation of your edge um, appliances. On the security as a service side, SASE includes firewall as a service, secure web gateway, cloud access security broker, zero trust element, a web API protection or web application firewall, DNS, remote browser isolation, and sandboxing. So that's the category as defined by Gartner two years ago. So what's happening so far today? Well. We're going to take a quick look at how the framework, how individual point solutions are expanding into other point solutions and creating a unified SASE solution. So let's take a look at how some of the legacy providers are accomplishing this. We'll start with the traditional firewall providers. So they've always had a carrier strategy um, with a sell through or sell with model with, with carrier services. They're all adding an SD-WAN capability. Uh, of course, they're an edge equipment strategy. And then on the security side, they are in introducing firewall as a service or network-based firewall. Zero trust elements typically uh, centered around their secure remote access. Uh, DNS capabilities, which they all offered in their on-prem platforms to begin with generally, and then sandboxing, of, of, of course. Now, that's what happens, or that's what we're seeing in the industry from a firewall, legacy firewall um, manufacturer perspective. When you look at the secure gateway uh, vendors, for example, they have a little bit of a different strategy because they're coming at the market from a different um, point. They're focusing on content distribution, of course, the secure web gateway element, CASB, zero trust, and uh, DNS services. Again, they're, they're taking their core competencies and they're adding to those core competencies with, uh, with complementary services. They're not leapfrogging and going into things that they don't yet have great domain experience with. And then lastly, let's take a look at what the traditional SD-WAN providers are, are doing. Of course, they have an SD-WAN strategy, also you know, leveraging the bandwidth aggregation elements, edge equipment, of course, the consolidation of the appliances, but they're also adding firewall as a service, secure web gateway services, and DNS services. So that's their perspective, that's their, um, that's their framework that they're evolving into a complete SASE product solution. And that messiness or disjointedness on the previous slide is why Gartner is still uh, evaluating the SASE marketplace as having a lot of work left to do. So here's a list of the current state of SASE according to Gartner from the presentation I saw just recently. So Gartner believes that there's an inconsistent policy platform within the SASE environment. It's complex and they're disparate management tools. So even if someone has a, a couple of those different components, if they've been acquired from a third party acquisition, those tools may not yet be integrated into a single management console, for example. There's immature sensitive data visibility and threat awareness, inconsistent coverage across all access types. It's still a siloed security versus SD-WAN and edge type of management. 
we have monolithic architectures that don't perform at scale. Again, with these bolted on platforms, they don't necessarily talk well to each other and they're not fully integrated, so there's a lot of handoffs that don't scale well. Very basic SLAs in the market. There's basic or no zero trust capabilities. We've done some videos on zero trust. Um, zero trust is one of the more difficult elements for the SASE providers to tackle. And so that's an, that's an ongoing work in progress. The user experience is fragmented and there are separate and siloed security and network requirements that still drive uh, that within the organization. So Gartner doesn't think SASE is there yet. We're just two years into their definition of, of the marketplace and a lot of things are moving, but things really haven't progressed as fast as I think Gartner uh, would like to see. But Gartner is optimistic about the future. This is where they see SASE going. So consistent policy enforcement, simplified policy management, sensitive data visibility and threat awareness, SASE strategies, including branch offices and edge networking, a modular architecture with a single pass encryption inspection construct rather than the multiple pass construct that I described earlier, contractually enforced SLAs, zero trust will actually become a reality within the SASE solution, transparent end user experience, and a unified IT responsibility. So eliminating those IT silos between network and security. So how do you start the SASE journey? Well, first of all, you have to understand what you have today. And for most organizations, that's pretty straightforward. What's a little bit more complex is evaluating when those solutions are up for renewal or up for refresh and whether or not you can use those um, renewal or refresh points as an opportunity to step into a SASE strategy. If those don't present a clear opportunity, then look at your IT security roadmap and see if there are any solutions that you're planning on implementing in the future and whether or not those fall into a SASE strategy. So these near-term opportunities are the best time to slot yourself into a SASE vendor um, solution that has the right strategy for your organization. Now, the first time you implement a SASE strategy, it's gonna require a lot of effort. It's a transition to a new system or a new platform uh, versus one that you might have today or if, if you're, if you're imp implementing something greenfield, uh, you know, that's the standard level of effort that's required to, to do something new. But the benefit comes in that second, third, and fourth implementation when if you're using the same SASE provider to, for those different uh, point solutions, that implementation will go much easier. The agents are already installed on, on, on your network, for example. It's more uh, t about turning up capabilities rather than installing new capabilities. Also, one of the things that I think Gartner has a very valid point around in terms of the lack of integration of solutions is addressed by some of the pure play SASE providers in the marketplace. Now, there aren't many, but there are a few in the marketplace that you can take a look at. Generally, they're also the most cost effective because they're a little immature. Some of their security components may not have all of the tuning knobs that you're, that you're used to in some of the other solutions that have been on the market for many, many years. But the value proposition that these organizations offer, the simplicity of uh, management that these organizations offer, the speed at which they're adding additional capabilities is an impressive rate. So you might want to take a look at these born in the SASE model vendors rather than people who are acquiring the SASE capabilities who have been in their legacy, uh, legacy segment for quite a while. Now with that said, our portfolio includes most of the meaningful SASE providers in the market today. But if you're interested in any of these or just discussing SASE in general, I'd ask you to reach out. Very happy to have a conversation with anyone who, who wishes to have one. My contact information is in the video description. And if you got some value out of this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and thank you very much in advance for doing that. And if you wanna find your way back to this channel to, to get some of the additional content over time, the best way of doing that is by hitting that subscribe button. That'll put my videos in your feed and you can find your way back here at your convenience. With that, I thank you for your time and I hope you have a great day.